Hey guys, Chris here. I've got a Christmas build video for you today. Today we're going to do the uh, Aga T3 uh, Genesis style tank uh, by Ude. It's becoming pretty popular. I've been building several of them in my coil workshops and what I can tell you is it's a great tank. It's probably one of my favorite Genesis tanks, especially for the price point. Um, the flavor is great. It performs great, but it's kind of finicky. I mean, it's a different design than what you're used to working with, and as the more I've been playing with it, there are a lot of nuances you need to be aware of to get the best performance out of it. So what I'm going to do today is uh, start from the build up. Um, I've got the tank completely disassembled. What makes the T3 unique is that the center post is actually your positive pin and it's only got a single negative post here and the way this works is we've got this piece which you can see has a hole to allow the juice in it's hollowed out so your wick's going to go down the center of that and you'll see there's a rubber o-ring here um, we're going to want to pay attention to that um, and then finally the bottom of this is where our positive pin is going to screw in so what I'm going to do is, uh, the other thing we want to look at is you're going to see that in the base of the tank there are also juice holes. So as we get through and go through this build, we're going to want to make sure those holes line up and I'm going to show you how to adjust those. And finally we've got the bottom pin and I've got the insulator pulled down a little bit so you can see that because we want to be careful of this insulator as well when we put it together. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide that up and we'll put this um, back together and I'll kind of talk through some of the uh, things you need to be aware of when you're doing this. Um, put it together I'm just going to take the top cap and the bottom cap and just screw those on. Don't tighten them down, just make sure it's seated well. should be finger tight, you should be able to unloosen it without having to work at it. Um, next thing we're going to want to do is put in this top pin. Now again you saw there's a rubber o-ring up here. Um, I don't think you can see it very well but well yeah you can. There's a black o-ring right down in the center of this and this whole positive pin just literally floats on these two o-rings and you're going to want to be careful of that um, as you're using it as you're changing your coils um, so I'm just going to go ahead and again um, be careful you know, there's a lip on this insulator where it sits in here um, because the way this is designed normally on a design like this you would screw it and unscrew it to change where that pin hits your firing pin in your mod um, this one works a little differently I'm only going to tighten it tight enough that it's together and making a good connection. Um, what you're going to see is that unlike others where that's, you would screw that up and down, this thing actually floats because of that rubber and you can see as I compress on the top it pushes that bottom pin out. Now what will happen is depending on the atomizers, you, or excuse me, the mods you're using, some of them that have a higher firing pin will actually push that way up and that will actually push this top piece up as well. And then when you go to use it on another mod, um, you'll, it won't fire. Um, what I do in those cases is rather than unscrewing that bottom pin to make it longer, you just want to come on here and grab with your fingernails and just lightly push down on that center post. And what that's going to do is you push that down and you can see that pin come up. You don't want to unscrew it and screw it um, because as you do, you're going to make connection, um, you know, change the connection to that post. Um, the other thing you're going to want to do is make sure your juice holes line up. Um, I suppose this could be a poor man's juice control but I like mine um, all the way open and what you do to adjust that is simply after you've got it together like this if you can't see all the way through it I'm going to take my smallest screwdriver here and you'll see that the top ring 
has two slots in it um, one here and one here now um, normally those would be used for the um, bottom wire lead on your coil but this is also how I'm going to adjust those holes so you can literally just turn this a little bit clockwise counterclockwise until it gets to the wide open position and you should be able to see um, all the way through that hole and um, through the other side now when you tighten your coil down that's going to change a little bit what we're going to do is we'll just come back and literally tweak it a little bit um, after the fact um, that being said the the next trick to this is building your coil in the wick um, I've seen people do it several ways I've seen people that try and um, you know wrap their coils first I've heard of people that actually take the center post out and get it all set and put together before they put their tank together um, I'm going to show you how I do it it's not ideal maybe um, but it's not overly hard and so the first thing I'm going to do is wrap my coil around my wick um, today I'm using X6, uh, XC116 ceramic um, it looks a lot like eco wool except it's a lot easier to work with and um, this stuff wicks like a champ it's just great um, it's a little thick for most Genesis tanks but it works great in the T3 it gives you a lot of room around the wick to, um, and it wicks really fast I've yet to have a dry head on this even if I leave it sitting up and I chain vape hard on it um, I've built them with stainless steel I've built them with stainless steel rope um, my other favorite is uh, two strands of one millimeter eco wool um, but I'm really in love with this ceramic um, one of the, it's really expensive but one of the cool things you see is I've already used this wick um, it's not frayed you can see where it's been burned from the coil um, but this stuff's durable and you can reuse it over and over again um, what I'm going to do is just build a simple coil and I'm going to do it just like I would with eco wool I'm going to do uh, six wraps of 28 gauge um, loosely around the wick I'm not going to do it so that it tight because I don't want it to choke off and you know stop the flow of the juice but I want the coil touching it all the way around and I'm going to do contact coils so that my coils just you know don't overlap but they touch each other and this one's probably not going to be my prettiest coil but that's okay two three four five six um, I'm going to push it together a little bit here um, I, like I said I want them all touching but not um, so that they uh, choke this off so you know after you get it wrapped you should be able to slide that up and down and move it around a little bit um, now because of the way that's designed what I like to do is take my bottom coil and um, I'm going to bend it with my thumb so that it's going down the length of the wick like this and what I'm going to do is put this center ring right over both pieces and then when I get a little bit of room here um, I'm going to bend that back up to make a nice little L shape and what that's going to allow me to do is when I put this back in here um, to hit that wire right in that slot to hold it in place while I turn this thumb screw down so I'm just gently gonna um, you know, tighten that down with my fingers a little bit um, you want it tight enough to hold the wire you don't want to over tighten it and after you do you want to check your holes again to make sure your juice holes are still lined up if they're not again take the little screwdriver tweak them up a little bit tighten that down a little more if you're really dexterous you can hold the screwdriver in place and then tighten that ring down even more um, 
I'm not going to worry about that for this part. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, once that's done, I'm going to take my top coil here and make sure that that's not overlapped. And um, I kind of hold my, I like my wick to stay centered for the most part and up tight. So I'm just going to hold that in place while I wrap a loop around this, what's the negative post on this. Uh, cinch that down. And put my screw on. Now, yeah, it takes me more effort to put the easy screw on than it does to, to do the hard one. Um, it's because my hands have juice on them, excuse me. We'll just put that on, tighten it down a little bit. Um, there are a couple things you're going to need to look at when you're done with your coil here. Um, there are, um, what I see a lot of people do is not putting that lead down. Um, let me see if I can turn the glare down here for you so you can actually see this. So what you'll see there is I have a lead going straight down and out. Um, what a lot of people end up doing when they're new to building this is having their bottom loops so low that it will actually short out against the inside of this post somewhere else and that changes your resistance. So if I bump this, jostle this, and one of these other wires makes contact here, it's going to change the resistance on my coil. Um, not a very desirable thing to do. Um, of course, I'm going to, you know, pretty this up a little bit after I get it in place. Um, the other thing you want to be careful about is this bottom wire. Now, there's just a tiny rubber O-ring that is protecting this from the outside of the tank, which is also your negative. So if this wire, if you don't cut that off nice and flush, um, that can actually make contact with the outside as this thing gets moved around and uh, cause all kinds of problems as well. Um, so, you know, you can use the wiggle method. I'm going to use my flush cutters. Just make sure there's no wire sticking out over that O-ring. Again, I'm going to check and make sure my juice holes are all lined up because I've been wiggling this around. And uh, that's all said and done. I'm going to go ahead and clip my top wire here. Um, for the sake of the video, we'll put this on the ohm meter and see what it comes out at. And this is where we get that whole random number generator thing I'm talking about because that thing floats. And you can see if I tighten it down, it changes. If I bump this, it changes. Um, it's saying 1.9. Um, that's going to drop after I burn this. But what's happened is, again, my coil works down and it starts making contact with that outside post. And we get problems. Um, so this should end up being, I don't know, um, one three, one four. By the time I get it done and burned, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my Biomac, and we'll go ahead and fire this up. Um, I don't usually burn my um, coils before. Uh, the wire before I put them in, I like to dry burn them and check for the hot spots. Um, of course, this is going to be one of those that we're going to have to be careful about this top leg, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit. Um, 
easiest way to do that is just to get some needle nose pliers. And tighten this down a little bit. So I'm just going to tighten that up. And I'll tighten my nut down. See, get a nice good even glow on there. Um, as you can see, my coil is still getting a little close to that inside post. So I want to watch that and adjust that back out a little bit. Once I get it where I want it and the top po top lead isn't glowing hot, um, it's time to put some juice in. Now, one of the negatives about this is this does have a tiny juice hole. Um, what I normally do if I don't have a, a, a fill syringe or a fill bottle is I actually use, find that it works best if I fill from right in the center. Um, if I do have a syringe or a needle tip, I can simply, um, you know, use this wick hole uh, or the fill hole. It just really whatever works best for you. I'll suck up the loose juice here, put a little on top just to prime it, and. Uh, what you can see is, especially with this ceramic, I can sit here and burn this all day long. Those coils aren't glowing, which means it's wicking like a charm. Um, you can see the vape coming off of this. Excellent vapor production. Um, the final thing I'm going to show you about here before I vape it is the top cap. You're going to notice that slot there. It's got a nice reduced chamber, which is going to give you really good flavor. It only has a single air hole here. Um, I believe the stock one is one millimeter. I did drill mine out to 564. Um, it's a matter of preference. I wouldn't go extremely high on the air hole on this. Um, because the wick is centered and because the way the top cap's designed, that's always going to be lined up with that coil so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so the last thing we're going to do is uh, take a vape on it. Like I said, if you don't hit, the, if you bump that around and it shorts out, um, you run into some problems, which is probably the worst part of this design. But um, this thing puts out great vapor for a Genesis tank. It really does. The flavor is great. It, it, it's like I said, I put it up there, you know, my, with a lot of my higher end tanks like the Prometheus and the Steamboy as far as flavors and um, vapor production goes. It's an interesting design. It's really not hard to work with once you get a feel for the tips and the tricks and the, the nuances of it. Um, and the price is right. It, you know, these things retail for around 50 bucks for, uh, you know, a good Genesis tank. That's a great deal. Um, I hope this guy helps you guys. If you like it, leave me comments, leave me feedback, let me know what to do next. Um, let me know what other things you'd like to see built. Talk to you later, guys.